Hey, this is Anthony with Revzilla TV, where you can watch, decide, and ride. Welcome to our detailed breakdown of the 2013 Bell Star Helmet, available at Revzilla.com. So for 2013, the Bell Star at the top of the food chain in both the tri-composite version as well as the carbon fiber version has got a fit overhaul. You know, Bell has had the star on the line since 2010, top of the food chain race helmet, most aggressive in its positioning for the race track. But keep in mind, in the, in years past, especially as Bell has developed the RS1, they found much a much better head shape, a much better race-inspired fit scheme. They've now translated that into the Bell Star. So the Star is going to have the same fit pattern as the RS1 now, and they've completely changed the EPS. So intermediate oval in its design, it's going to hug your face, it's going to have a nice contour to it. You know, I've done a handful of track days in the original Bell Star, and my only gripe was that it was a little bit neutral sh shaped for me, and it fit a little bit on the larger side. The new Bell Star is not going to do that. They fine tuned it in. Now, I've already told you that it's a hardcore race helmet. This is their pro model on the sport side. From the application, it's meant for in the tuck, whether you're on the street, track day, or you're racing. If you look at the spoiler in the back and the aerodynamic profile, that is what this helmet is absolutely designed to do. You've heard me already mention the RS1, which is a little bit more crossover for track as well as the street. And keep in mind too, your Snell 2010, your DOT rated, and again, you're investing over that $600 mark for the carbon fiber version, but the tri-composite, which is the exact same helmet, is just using a tri-composite, which is carbon fiber, fiberglass, and, and Kevlar. That's gonna come in solids and graphics in around that $500 mark. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about which one to choose. You know, it does get into weight. You're talking about carbon fiber, you know, might as well touch on it. The weight savings about two, two and a half ounces. So the carbon fiber version comes in around three pounds, just under three and a half pounds, whereas the tri-composite version for the non-carbon is gonna come in just over that three and a half pound mark. Now looking at it, let's talk about that fit. The fit is going to be an intermediate oval head shape. It's going to be what I consider to be race fit, which fits a little bit more snugly around the cheeks and the jawline. That's that new fit for this year. And remember, use the size chart on the site, but we ship for free, exchange for free, no restock fees if you need to send it back to us. So don't fret if you need any help or if you're not quite sure about it. But it, it should be a much more consistent fit for those of you that are used to wearing the Bell Sport helmets. Now, sticking in line with our exterior, let's talk about the exterior here. We talked about the carbon fiber versus the tri-composite, and we look at the way it's swept. You can see that it's a long integrated spoiler that serves two purposes. One, it creates an area of negative pressure, and it helps reduce buffeting, but also that area of negative pressure helps the air circulate out through the vents in the back. And you're going to see there are four key vents, two on the side, two underneath the top spoiler, and remember, the Bell Star comes with that track strip adhesive plastic strip, which is going to increase the downforce as well as, which is gonna give you better stability and a better Venturi effect if you, use the, if you choose to use it when you're on the track. Sweeping around to the front, you can see it's a very aggressive design as it sweeps back and that ties in with the ventilation scheme. You have an open and closed chin vent, which is going to vent to the face or vent to the shield, two settings. You have a brow vent that's going to vent into the forehead and around above the eyebrows, and then two big chimneys. And the nice part with the new EPS is the way the vent holes are cut out. So you have open and close, and I do like these. They're the same style open and closers here on these chimney vents, easy to find with the glove. That's always one of my grapes, especially if I'm suited up for battle, if I'm on the racetrack. So looking at that and thinking about the way the air flows in, it's going to flow in get sucked through a channel on the EPS, but they're angular channels that come in on the EPS. They're not your stock vertically integrated 10 millimeter vent holes. These are rectangular and sweeping in their shape to promote better airflow. And again, we've already talked about the ventilation scheme coming out of the helmet. Remember, everything about this helmet is designed to be worn in the tuck on the race pack, performing really, really well. Now looking at the visor and the shield mechanism. So it's your stock shield from Bell. They use a similar shield on most of their premium and their sport helmets. The nice part about Bell is that other than laser, they're the only guys doing a transition shield. So you can get that transition blend. It's a massive investment and it's around $100 plus for that shield. But what you have the ability of doing then is never ever carrying a smoke shield in your bag because it goes from clear to medium smoke in about 30 seconds. Bell's also done a nice job here too. If we look at the way that the shield is set up, you have a couple detents there. And then the shield change mechanism is lightning fast. You can see how quickly I take it off. And then for continuity's sake in the video, I'm just gonna snap it right back on. Line up my first side, line up my second side, and you're done. Moving over to the left side, your non-throttle side, you have a three position lock. You have locked, 
you have cracked and you have neutral. So now you have the ability to throw it into city position on those cold mornings. And if you're on the track, you have the ability to lock it down and make sure it's not going to go anywhere when you're hitting down that front straight or your head checking. So again, nice race inspired features. Thinking about the guts on the Bell Star for 2013, another nice upgrade here. So we've talked about the fit, but now it's using the XT2 liner, which we originally saw rolled out for the RS1. It's a nice upgrade, antibacterial, antimicrobial. You can see it when I start to snap it out here that you're gonna get an idea of how it all ties together. Cheek pads tie in with neck rolls, completely removable chin curtain. Again, it's a premium liner meant to keep you comfortable in extreme conditions. When you're focused on the racetrack, you're a faster racer, you're also going to be safer racer because you're not spending a moment thinking about the fitment of any of your gear. That's always the goal. Notice these light lines. That's where this new integrated material is that's going to keep it antibacterial. And notice it's mesh in these different areas, mesh in an area that's gonna cover up a speaker pocket. If I rotate it this way, you're going to see that there is, whoop, let me pull up my shield here, I have it locked down. Pull up my shield, rotate it to the side, and you're gonna be able to see that there's a piece of foam in there that I'm gonna pull out. There's my foam. If you want to use a Bluetooth communicator, as much as this is a track helmet, you now have the ability to use a Cardo, to use a Sina, to use an Interphone. You're gonna be able to use that. And again, Bell recommends Sina. They have a partnership with Sina, but you can do that on your own if you wanna go down that direction. Now I'm gonna move the other cheek pad out here, pull it out with its neck roll, plop my bad boy back down here on top. They're still using the Magna Fusion system, only in the high-end helmets, a neodymium magnet that's going to allow you to close the chin strap, but then have it stay in place via magnet so you never have to worry about strapping it down. And I'm gonna move now into my comfort liner, and I'm pulling it up. Notice I'm pulling it up from the brow. I wanna be gentle with it. Sometimes when they put it on the brow, and you see me do this in a lot of my higher-end videos, because what's going on here with the manufacturer is they're recognizing the fact that they don't want to put any snaps on the forehead because it's adding width, it's adding thickness, and it's adding pressure point. So by Bell recognizing that and putting my connection points closer to the actual EPS liner itself, now I'm in the front of the helmet, I'm never worried about having any kind of pressure point that are gonna live on my forehead. Notice 3D liner, lots of big cutaways for those vent channels, and again, that XD2 liner on the inside, which is that nice upgrade for 2013. Moving back inside, I'm gonna unmagna fusion myself and show you the ventilation scheme. There's my vent scheme. You see my venturis in the back are a little smaller. My big sweeping vents in the front. You can see that one right over there where my finger is. And you see how that kind of rolls up. That's a monster size vent that's gonna vent directly to the new and improved EPS. And notice even those two channels right there in the front as I, as I kind of point right there. You can see them, they're gonna start and they're gonna flow air in through this brow vent right here. Suck it along the back. I always call it the ventilation mohawk within the internal guts of a helmet and hopefully give you great exhaust down and throughout the back. So click right here to visit the Bell Star at RevZilla.com. Remember, we do graphic overviews. There's also solid colors available. And just for the purposes of this video, I chose to home in on that carbon fiber version. But remember, a Bell Star is a Bell Star from 2013 on. And I believe those 2010 models have all been closed out at this point. This is a bit of a running change for those guys, those crazies up in Santa Cruz at Bell. So click that button. Remember, we're gonna ship and exchange for free. And as always, after you subscribe on RevZilla TV and leave us your comments, you can always get in touch with us. If you have any questions about premium helmets, track day helmets, race helmets, whatever you want to talk about within the Bell line, see us at RevZilla.com or 877-792-9455. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Anthony. We'll see you next time.